uh, most of my relatives are from non-science backgrounds and they often ask me what I as a scientist do and I myself find in a very uh, tough situation because I really don't have a, an appropriate answer. I don't uh, sell clothes in a shop. I don't work in a software company trying to become a manager. I don't act in movies, although as a child I sometimes wished I were a superstar and I'm sure a lot of you people wish the same. But the harsh reality is that I'm a scientist. So who are scientists? <clears throat> the standard answer would be scientists are boring, studious type people. But today I'd like to seize the day for the people of my ilk and show you that scientists are really have one of the most amazing jobs in the world. They, are tr they see the invisible. So now you would ask me, how do you see something which is invisible? Okay, so here is the recipe of how to see invisible. The first thing is to notice something interesting around you, okay, and ask a question, how does that interesting thing work? Okay. So then have some guess or a hypothesis, okay, maybe this is how this clock works or maybe this is how a tree grows, something like that. And then check your hypothesis or your guess with experiments and analysis, okay. And at the end, you try to match your uh, analysis and experiments with your hypothesis or the guess, okay. You refine your guess at the end depending on the results of your experiments and you go back at the beginning. So you go over the cycle again and again. So science is an iterative process. You have a, you begin with a hypothesis, you test it, you make it better and so on. So this recipe is known as the scientific method, okay. And this like most profound statements is so simple to state and so very difficult to follow. Okay, it's, it's much easier to take the easy way and not do the full rigorous exercise. Okay, that's why not all of us are scientists. <coughs> so let me give you an example. We know, all know about gravity because some scientist told us about it. It's not because he told us that we believe in it. It's because all of us individually can experience it. Okay. So Newton, so it all started with this, uh, uh, this applying scientific method to what you see around you. So Newton wondered whether the force that makes the apple fall from the tree is the same as the one that makes the moon go around the earth. Okay. So you, here is a cannon okay, and cannon in shoot, is shooting out the cannonball with increasing speed. So as you see, you, it's easy to imagine if you shoot out with higher and higher speed beyond a certain speed you can see that this cannon will go around the earth without ever reaching the ground. Maybe this is how the moon goes around the sun, uh, uh, goes around the earth. Okay? So he started with a guess. He said let us guess that there is a force between masses and decreases with the distance between they, them like 1 over distance square. So this is a little mathematics but I am sure all of you have done this in school. Uh, so he started with this guess, he did calculations, he did analysis and for that he invented calculus. I am sure you are st you're having, uh, you had scary dreams when you were, in, you were in school learning calculus. He invented calculus to test his hypothesis. Okay? And to test his hypothesis he had to use a lot of data about planets positions and about moons position. Okay? And these data were available to him thanks to astrologers because at that time astrologers were very interested in knowing the position of stars and planets and uh, the moon so that they could tell your future. So Newton used all that data and tried to work to see if his theory or his guess or hypothesis fits the data and voila it matched the data. So you see he uh, saw the invisible something that we all experienced every day from the 
time immortal, he, he tried to connect the dots. He found a profound law of nature, namely gravitation, that the apples in the trees and the celestial bodies in the sky are governed by a profound physical law, which is very simple to state and is universally a, applicable. Okay? So this is the power of scientific method. Okay? In, uh, under scientific method, no hypothesis or no guess or no person is beyond scrutiny. See, there is always this iterative process of improving your hypothesis. So Newton's laws are not the ultimate theory of gravity. And they are not ultimate theory of gravity because they don't match all the experiments. So Einstein generalized the law of gravity and explained the small deviations from Newton's predictions. So you see, this is an example of that iterative thing that you, you have a theory, do an experiment, find whether your experimental result matches your predictions. If it does not, go and refine your theory or guess. So this is a prime example of how scientific method works. So now I'll come to the literal aspect of seeing the invisible. So how does one see invisible? <clears throat> and now I'll introduce the hero of my talk, black holes. I'm sure most of you have heard about black holes at some point of your life. Black holes are the ultimate, uh, ultimate dense objects out of which not even light can escape. Okay? Since light cannot escape, they are truly invisible. Now the question is, how do we see things? Right? We see things if uh, those things emit light. For example, these light bulbs. We see these light bulbs because they are hot and they are emitting light. Or we see things because they reflect light. For example, I can see some of you guys sitting in the audience because the light from the bulb is reflected off your faces. Okay? So we see light, uh, we see things if either they have their intrinsic light or if they reflect light. Okay? But I, as I told you, uh, from black holes, not even light can escape. So we should not be able to see black holes. They should be truly invisible. Okay? It's useful to know the concept of escape velocity in order to understand black holes. And I'm sure even this you did in school. So here is a simple illustration. Okay? We all uh, at some point have played with balls and whenever we throw the balls up, they always return back. Okay? They reach a maximum height and come back because our earth is pulling back the cricket ball. Okay? But there is something called the escape velocity or escape speed. If you throw the ball with that speed away from the earth, it will never return back. Okay? And I am sure some of you remember the value of the escape speed from the earth. It is 11.6 kilometers per second, per second, not per hour. Okay? So this is so fast uh, that in everyday experience, we do not experience it. Uh, and according to Newton's theory, the escape velocity is just given in terms of the mass of the earth and the radius of the earth. So it is just square root of m divided by r. The mass m is the mass of the earth and r is the radius of the earth. <coughs> so if we put the earth's values, we get 11.6 kilometers per second. So now the question is, if we make some object more and more massive, so if we increase this mass m and make it more and more compact, that is more and more small, that is decrease this radius, we can make this escape velocity higher and higher, right? Because this is m divided by r. So the thing is, if we can, make, we can ensure that this escape velocity can be as high as you want. But we know, according to Einstein's rel relativity, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. Okay? So basically, if the escape velocity of a body exceeds the speed of light, nothing, not even light can escape out of the gravitational pull of that body. Okay? So this is what a black hole is. Black hole is a body which is so compact that the escape velocity is higher than the speed of light. So in that case, this object is truly invisible. So basically, uh, the radius has to be lower than some threshold value. That's all there is to making a black hole. 
okay but this is not that easy to do <coughs> one conceptual difficulty here is that uh, photons some of you may know that photons or light particles do not have mass they are massless but i told you that newton's laws say that the force is proportional to the masses so if mass is zero why would an, a body like a photon which does not have a mass experience force and as usual einstein comes to the rescue einstein says mass is energy and energy is mass i'm sure a lot of you have heard e equals mc square that means energy is mass and mass is energy since photons have energy because we can see them we can see light since they have energy they also have an equivalent mass okay and because of that they are affected by gravity so this is a more refined version of newton's gravity okay and it allows for these black holes out of which nothing not even light can escape so they are truly invisible <clears throat> so you here is sort of is a system uh, schematic representation of a black hole so black hole is like an ultimate well out of which nothing not even light can come out so once you are in there nothing comes out okay <clears throat> now the question is can we see black holes i i said that uh, nothing comes out of black holes not even light and i before that i said that you see things because either they emit light or they reflect light since light cannot come out of black holes is there any way we can see or experience the presence of a black hole and the answer surprisingly is yes and i'll tell you how <clears throat> so we cannot see them directly but there is an indirect way through which we can detect black holes okay so let me give you an analogy suppose you are in a jungle okay and you encounter small dead animals every now and then okay so there is a very strong possibility that those dead animals are there because someone killed them a ferocious carnivore for example in the same even though you cannot see or hear that carnivore you have a strong reason to believe that there is someone who is killing these animals in the same way even though we cannot directly see black holes we can see the effect of black holes on its surroundings so what is shown here in this image is an artist's impression of matter around black hole okay so you see matter going around the black hole in form of a disk which is uh, which is emitting light and you see matter going off in form of a jet so from uh, from observations we have deduced that matter around black hole should look like this this is an artist image this is not a real uh, picture using a telescope because we cannot resolve so close to the black holes so basically in this strong potential or this strong gravity of black hole all the matter is heated so much and we i just said that hot matter radiates so this matter uh, radiates okay and i just want to remind you that uh, our eyes human eyes are sensitive to a very narrow wavelength region very narrow frequencies of light called the visible band but the light can have a very broad band of frequencies ranging from very low frequency radio to high energy gamma rays okay but our eyes is sensitive to a very tiny portion of that wave band and most of the radiation coming out of this matter is in very high, is uh, is in gamma rays extending from gamma rays to radio waves unlike stars stars mostly emit in visible and infrared and ultraviolet so stars are very different objects compared to matter around black holes and that's how we could indirectly uh, infer the presence of black holes so this is these are two examples of this influence of a uh, black hole around the matter uh, in, on the matter around it so the left hand is an image of something called a quasar quasar is an optical object which is so bright so this is the quasar this this point it's so bright that it outshines the rest of the galaxy within it within which it is sitting it's like uh, our sun in the daytime at night we see stars but in the daytime we don't see any stars because 
our sun outshines them like uh, uh, if they are not present. In the same way, this quasar outshines the rest of the stars in the galaxy and we cannot see them. The other example here is in the radio band. What you see, see here is a radio image and you see a lot of uh, radio emission coming out of these hot spots and this is a very big uh, scale. For comparison, the size of the galaxy in which this radio jet is coming from is this much. So, this central massive black hole is spewing out matter and energy to such a large scales, much, much, much beyond the extent of the galaxy. Okay? So, even though black holes are so tiny, they have extremely uh, important effect on its surroundings as you can see here. Now, the question is, is, is that the only way we can see black holes? The, the way in which there is, we see something which is very energetic and has a broad band spectrum ranging from radio to gamma rays or is there something more direct? And the answer is from past 20 years we have been, uh, we, we have started to gather more direct evidence for black holes. And here is an example and this is right in our neighborhood in the center of the center of our own mil Milky Way galaxy. So, what is shown here <coughs> is uh, data over a peri period of 1995 to 2008. Okay? Then this is our galactic center and these dots which are changing uh, sort of their color are the uh, trace out the orbits of stars which are located in the center of our galaxy. So, these uh, stars trace out ellipses. Okay? These ellipses are exactly like the orbits of planets around the sun and these follow the famous Kepler's laws which are based on Newton's, uh, Newton's discovery of gravity. So, you can fit an, a nice ellipse to all these uh, orbits that we have traced out using a telescope. This is a real image using a telescope. Okay? So, you can trace out all these ellipses and from Newton's gravity we know that uh, these ellipses should have a, a massive object at the common focus. So, this is the focus, this is the location of the black hole. You can see that in infrared, this is an infrared image. In infrared, the black hole does not emit at all. Okay? But these stars which are trace, which are tracers of gravity are, are making these nice beautiful ellipses. So, you, you infer from the motion of these stars, you infer the presence of a black hole and you can also measure its mass, its 4 million solar masses. Okay? So, now we know that most galaxies uh, have massive black holes ranging from millions to billions of solar mass at their centers. Okay? And this Milky Way is not an exception. So, here one of the stars has made one full orbit and its fastest speed is comparable to 0.2 times c. That is a very fast speed. 0.2 times the speed of light is almost unimaginable. It is a million times faster than a Shoei Bhakta cricket ball. I mean, of course, you cannot imagine that. And also 200 times faster than the, than the speed of the uh, earth going around the sun. Only a very strongly gravitating object like a black hole can produce such fast moving objects like stars. So, this is a direct proof of the existence of black holes. Okay? So, I hope uh, through this talk I have convinced you that using the scientific method we can know and understand the beautiful universe uh, in which we exist and this is uh, and uh, uh, I would like to uh, end my talk here. Thank you.